Hey guys, this is Anders with Atom Audio, and today we are with John Blass in his Nashville studio to talk about Dolby Atmos. So this is gonna be the first part of a multi-part series documenting the process of building out a studio with Dolby Atmos. We are here with Grammy-winning mix engineer, John Blass, uh, to talk about the decision to go with Dolby Atmos and what that looks like. Uh, but before we get into it, would you mind just kind of telling the people what you do and, and where we are? Sure, uh, I am a mixing engineer um, and we are here in Nashville, Tennessee in my personal mix room uh, where I uh, mix music every day. Nice. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. <laughs> of course. So the first question I have is, what was the point where you said, I should outfit this room with Dolby Atmos? Was there a certain aha moment or, or what was that like for you? You know, I actually started thinking about and taking steps towards doing this uh, back in the spring of 2021. And I started just feeling like, I think this is where things are going. And I really was interested in learning more and outfitting my own Atmos room and learning that format. So after doing some research on how to outfit the space with Dolby, what is something back in 2021 you wish you knew going into this process? I think I wish, A, I knew how quickly this format was going to take hold, and B, that I knew how steep the learning curve was. Um, I think initially I kind of thought it was just more places to pan things, um, and it's it's much more complicated than that. With the build out specifically, there's just a lot to figure out and a lot to learn. The technology moves so quickly that it keeps changing too. Um, I even, I bought some gear and returned it before I even took it out of the box because I, it was no longer relevant. I didn't need it anymore um, as technology changes. But there's a lot you need to figure out in terms of how to connect it all, how to interface it all with your computer. How are you gonna reference other mixes so that you kind of have a sense of what you're doing? There's a whole, you know, technical aspect of learning how the software works. There's a creative process of learning how to make it work for music. And there's also like the studio integration process, which, you know, is buying gear and learning new software and measuring and figuring things out. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of research and a lot of talking to people to figure all that out. And before we jump too much farther into the gear aspect of Dolby Atmos, can you speak a little bit about what this room is? When did you build it out? What is the size of it? What made it suit well for Dolby Atmos? Um, this room is, it's my own personal space. It's not a commercial facility. And it is, I don't know, roughly 12 something by 15 something in, with eight foot ceilings. And that presents challenges because this room was designed for stereo and when you add a bunch more speakers things get a little more complicated ideally we would have more ceiling height to hang the speakers ideally we would have doors in different places for, so we could put speakers exactly where we want just like in stereo nothing's ever exactly perfect and you can do a number of things with with speaker delays and whatnot to make it all within spec and translate well in dolby atmos So the landscape for gear needed to do a Dolby Atmos room is changing on a regular basis. Um, but what was some of the necessary gear that you had to acquire to, to do this process? The fundamental level, like you need speakers. I mean, it can be in a variety of different setups. Um, 7.1.4 is pretty standard and typical. It's also the requirement to QC Atmos music. And that's what we'll be integrating into this room. But even choosing that, that's 11 speakers, seven around and four on the ceiling. And then you also have to somehow have an interface that can output to that many speakers, as well as handle EQ and delay for those speakers. There's a lot of great companies that do it now though. Um, Focusrite makes some really great uh, hardware pieces with a monitor controller that I know a lot of great engineers use. I actually ended up with the Avid Matrix Studio. Um, it has the SPQ card built right in, which can handle the delay in EQ and works with Pro Tools, which I am in. So while they're not all installed yet, what was one of the reasons that you decided to go with the Atom Audio A7Vs for your Dolby Atmos setup? I have been an A7X user for years. And so I wanted the speaker that I'm accustomed to and used to in stereo 
all the way around me. And when we started that process, uh, it turned out that Adam was about to release the A7Vs. So we decided to go with the A7V. Um, and I've had the luxury of listening to these and working on them for the past uh, few months. And I've been really happy with them and thrilled with them, both sonically and also in terms of features. They are DSP equipped, which in short means that they can do a lot of functions that I initially planned to do elsewhere, like speaker delay, they can do in what 0.1 millisecond increments, which helps drastically when you know you're you're fine tuning the system after install. It can do quite a range of EQ. It even has sonar works built into it, so you can import your SonarWorks profile into the speaker and no longer have to run that plugin or that software on your computer. Also, with the A control software, you can change any of those settings from the listening position. You're not going to climb on step ladders to bump an EQ a little bit, mm -hmm. or um, you can just do it from your from your computer. One of the other things I thought was really neat about this box is that they have what they call UNR mode, which as a longtime listener of an A7X, when I flipped that button, it changes the voicing of the speaker to reflect the, the AX series, and it was startling. Like, I thought I was looking at the wrong speaker. It, it sounded exactly like my A7X. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of fun working on these speakers and, and playing with them and um, hearing what they can do. So you've gone through this whole process kind of learning everything on your own. What are three tips that you'd give to someone that's wanting to outfit the room with Dolby Atmos? The first would be to go to some other rooms, go to existing Atmos rooms and listen and work if you can and talk to them about their solutions and how they're doing things and try to get into the details of that a little bit. The more you talk about it, the more issues you're going to run into that you will find that they found a solution to. A lot of the times this this moves so fast that sometimes when they, you know, implemented this a year ago, there's a bunch of changes now that can simplify or change how you would do it, but it's going to help you think about things clearer and know better where to go. The second thing I would I would recommend is to use an installer of some some sort, someone who has done this before. Um, who has the skills and resources to do it well. You certainly can do it yourself. Dolby will help you figure out where to put them, um, but it is still up to you to get that right. And figuring out angles and positions in an imperfect environment is extremely challenging. Um, hanging things from a ceiling, not that hard. Hanging things from a ceiling at exactly the right place at the right angle can be really tricky. And so that's that's one thing I'm doing is I'm using an installer to to help position and hang and do whatever has to be done in this room to make it as good as it possibly can be. And the third thing I would recommend is plan some time. This is complicated on all three of those fronts and you need to kind of set aside time and organize time to study the implementation of the studio the technical aspects of Dolby Atmos and the creative aspects of Dolby Atmos. Because if you don't have dedicated time, you're just going to continue working in stereo because you're busy and you have work and and it's familiar and comfortable and um, you you almost have to force yourself to do this um, and, and learn it because that's a great way to grow. As you can tell, it's not built out yet, but what is the next step uh, for you and Tony and the Dolby team? Yeah, we actually have Atmos uh, install scheduled. Almost all the equipment is here and ready to go. And um, I'm really excited to dig into the, the speaker placement and getting it all set up exactly as it should be so that we, um, so we're set up for success here. So I think that covers the first part of the Dolby Atmos series here with John Blass in his studio. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode when we talk to the installer um, about finalizing the space and getting everything up and running. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible. Uh, and be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this.